fired and destroyed two caravels under construction. A sword was seen to rise up out of the ashes and fly away into the heart of the city. Hail and well met, and welcome back to another Realms Lore episode. I am here with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Sir Ed Greenwood, and today we are talking about the secrets of Sir Loon. Ed. Okay, so, 1499 DR, like right now in Realms Time, uh, the second city, well, they wouldn't agree with that, but the second city of Sembia. What's going on? Imagine a gossip columnist, but telling you the dark truth. <laughs> uh, if you're enjoying these Realms Lore videos, Please consider subscribing to the Patreon and becoming a Protector of the Realms. That's patreon.com slash edgreenwood. And your support there is what allows us to continue making these videos for you here. But for the time being, please enjoy this video about what's afoot in Sembia's City of Luxuries. Sembia's reawakening has spurred the rebuilding, not just of Ordulan, but construction everywhere. In Serlun, this has taken the form of repairs to balconies and external stairs, and the eradication of a street of sagging huts and hovels to make room for wave crest towers, a new mansion for many. This grand high house soars five floors above the cobbles and sprawls over an entire block, but is really clusters of trios and quartets of rooms um, gathered around side courtyards opening off the street, Dragon Serpent Lane in this case. Construction is rushing along, and what's built thus far looks grand, but word of a growing problem has leaked out. Murders, as in six killings of construction workers, all mysterious. What's going on? There are rumors of a gang war or factions such as the Zentrum settling scores, but this may be the first test for Serloon's new Wise Eyes force, a secretive squad of investigators added to the new city guard, the renamed Watch, who also have new uniforms, dark purple with red piping and silver back and breast uh, plates, helms, greaves and bracers, and new and better weapons. The many small Serlunan gnome and human family firms who make various cast alloy items collectively pewter, though each family has its own jealously guarded metal mixes and processes, have had suspicions swirling around them for years, mainly of smuggling <laughs> small valuable items encased inside castings. Recently, word has spread that the Vronan gnome family sells darkware to select customers. That is, cast pewter cups or goblets that poison wine that comes into contact with. The latest news is that the Obralars are selling alloy eggs for use as sling stones, hollow vessels of thin alloy designed to shatter on impact and release the small amounts of acid that the alloy resists being eaten by upon the target. For years, many Sarlunan casters have sold breakable metal eggs that release clouds of smoke when they shatter. In the wake of the sudden disappearance, likely assassination, of Lord Governor Hailta Johannes, Johannesarian, not only did the Netherese influence over the city fade almost overnight, after the destruction of the city Sultansar, or Shade, Rumors arose that she'd been assembling a local treasury for the Netherese, partly from wealth seized from the temples to other gods than Shar, she'd seized and destroyed or rebuilt into arsenals, barracks, and coin vaults, that is, banks. Various folk, both citizens and visiting adventurers, had been hunting for Hailta's hidden wealth, thus far without any, publicly known at least, success. Fire recently broke out at the Mav Narathan family shipyard and destroyed two caravels under construction. A sword was seen to rise up out of the ashes and fly away into the heart of the city. 
So what was a magical blade doing aboard a half-finished hull, usually a swarm with workers? Where did it go? Who has it now, and what are its powers? Two of the quietest old coin merchant families of Serloon are the houses of Harandreth, who have holdings all over the Dragon Coast and Vilhan Reach ports, and Ponceslam, known as jewelers and dealers in luxury furniture, hangings and furnishings of all kinds. Although both were rumored to have been working closely with the Netherese, both are now believed to have sponsored the removal of the Lord Governor and to be covertly seeking to choose who sits on the new Sar Crescent of Serloon, the ruling merchant council, which now has six members and is planned to have nine by year end, and eventually a dozen. They may or may not have had something to do with the murder of two Crescent councillors, one of whom is rumored to have been secretly either a Theon or a Zentarim, depending on which rumors one believes. The dead crescents are Darntar Abranath, the suspected agent for outland interests, and Jarl Tand Lavrelovar. Right now, the sitting members of the Sar Crescent are Lady Voice, that's spokesperson, Verona Ravard, aging but forceful and wily, a blonde, heavyset woman widely considered just, reasonable, and wise, Lord Askalt Thorondarar, jaded, sardonically eloquent, and widely considered corrupt, with his votes for sale to the highest bidder, Lord Maxarl Rovranen, a short, fat butterguts of a man who eats and drinks prodigiously and loves hot sauces and sweet desserts, Lady Delvre Wondan, beautiful, quiet, and mysterious. Her low public profile spawns constant wild rumors of her being a shape-shifting monster, perhaps even a dragon, or taking such beasts as lovers, or that she's a lich who's the pawn of Zastam or the Zentrum, or even the cult of the dragon. <laughs> Lady Tarvra Onstelard, a loud, domineering, plain-of-looks middle-aged woman, who's a self-made coin mountain with performance in local trading circles that led her to be called as subtle as a club and as about as wise and discerning as a club do. And Lord Delt Ragrathlin, a middle-aged halfling who owns the largest Serlunan dock worker business, the Raghands, known for their speed and efficiency of loading, unloading, and safe handling stowage. And Lara Velmark, a trader and warehouse owner from Yon, is trying to farm weld boar, breeding them in barns and feeding them spoiled food from Serloon's inns and eateries. She believes that tame boar can be whole roasted and then sold as carving whole roasts to large city kitchens. The popular Lion's Table Eatery on Alsumber Street is serving her tame boar and reports that they can't keep up with orders for hungry diners roast, which are slices of roasted tame boar as big as both of the diner's hands in an apricot and leek gravy. There has been a recent rise in the number of Serlunan private clubs. Luxurious sleeping, dining, and revelry hosting downtown mansions open to anyone, high, low, and even outlanders, who pay a 140 gold piece per year basic fee, drinks charged extra atop that. The city has always hosted very expensive, exclusive clubs dominated by Sembian nobility. But now, anyone who can pay the basics can enjoy the amenities of a club. For many, they're buying either convenient if Spartan bedchambers for short stays in the city or meeting rooms for doing business that are more spacious and luxurious than what their homes offer. The most popular of these clubs are Barliers on Spindle Street, The Crowing Cockatrice on Our Dolphin's Ride, and Chansos on Delm Temple Bar. There's a rumor that someone called a Lambert 
has started a secret cellar club, a Lambers Gate, that caters to drow and illithids somewhere under Alsumber Street, and several rumors that claim most of these clubs are sponsored by factions and serve as meeting places for faction members to meet and scheme. Workers enlarging cellars under a row of grand houses along Spindle Street have found old cellar rooms full of slates. Cut roofing slates stacked so tightly that the rooms are completely filled. If these come to market locally, the price of roofs may plunge and Saerloon may get re-roofed over the next two seasons. If they get shipped around the Sea of Fallen Stars, breakage will be a problem for long overland shipments. The same may happen in many ports. It's a gift from the gods for the house owners of Spindle Street, no matter what lies ahead. And that's just a swift overview of what's unfolding in Saerloon these days, as Sembia reawakens and resumes its plunge into wealth, excess, and self-proclaimed importance. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. Inagu, or y Inagu, 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 the demon lord of gnolls. Well, a demon prince. Sometimes he's a prince, sometimes he's very, very bad indeed. No. Uh, <laughs> Inagu, and there are actually people in the realms who will go Inagu. Inagu. So any any variation on stress and length that you but Inagu. You don't want to say his name anyway. Because, you know, they hear. You just want to say Demon Lord of Knows. What kind of secrets are they vile? No. They're all they're always they're all vile. vile. It's <laughs> Sambia. Okay. <clears throat> Ed, you wanna tell him maybe what's afoot in Sembia's Sembia's f Hold on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Error.exe, dude. <laughs> We're working on it. Okay, just keep it, whatever. Keep it rolling. It's fine. Yep. And several rumors. Yep. Perfecto.